Welcome back to our news bulletin. Over 1,700 people have died from the COVID-19 in the U.S. in the last 24 hours, as the country's death toll nears 86,000. Brazil has registered a record 13,944 new cases in a day, increasing the toll to over 200,000 with nearly 14,000 deaths. The global death toll from the virus has crossed 302,000 with over 4.4 million people infected. Further details in this report. Countries are surely but cautiously opening up amid warnings of a second wave of the virus. Fatalities in France continue to spike, while Cambridge University study reveals about 6.5 million people have been infected in the UK. The WHO has warned if countries fail to prepare their health systems, the new coronavirus could become endemic. The lesson here is no time for celebration, but time for preparation. Because it's not the first time that the world is facing a pandemic, but definitely this has been a very, very devastating one. So even if we have few cases, we have seen that the strongest health systems can be overwhelmed in a couple of weeks. The economic fallout of the virus has got the world in fits as even massive stimulus packages fail to compensate. The International Olympics Committee expects to bear the costs of hundreds of millions due to the postponed Tokyo 2020 Games. We uh, anticipate uh, that uh, we will have to bear costs of up to uh, 800 million US dollars uh, for our part of uh, the res uh, responsibilities for the organization of uh, uh, the Games. And uh, this amount, uh, there will be covered by uh, the IOC itself, uh, of course, including uh, any funding uh, that we may have to refer to uh, from the Olympic uh, Foundation. Public health authorities across the globe have pushed for expanding cutting-edge research of COVID-19 in a bid to develop a vaccine. Now, Pakistan has reported 33 deaths due to coronavirus in the last day, taking the tally to 803. More than 37,000 people have been infected in the country, with 1,430 testing positive over the past 24 hours. Health officials say the coronavirus recoveries have surpassed 10,000 after 460 people recovered in the past day. The officials say the province of Sindh has surpassed Punjab in the number of total cases with over 14,000 infections. Meanwhile, Special Assistant to Prime Minister on Health Dr. Zafar Mirza said the government has made a documentary for doctors and other relevant people about the usage of personal protection equipment. Mirza said a Pakistani laboratory has signed a license agreement with U.S. Gilead Sciences for manufacturing their medicine antiviral drug. Azad Jammu and Kashmir President Masood Khan says India is using COVID-19 as a cover to wipe Kashmir off the international diplomatic agenda. In an interview, he said one soldier for nine people against one doctor for 3,900 is telling the story of occupied Kashmir. He said India has accelerated the pace of killing innocent people and changed the domicile law under the guise of COVID-19. Masood also raised concerns that India may launch a false flag operation. The AJK president said he is worried the pandemic and non-stop violence are wreaking havoc on the other side of the line of control. In another news, the U.S. says ISIS Khorasan is responsible for the attacks on a maternity hospital and a funeral in Afghanistan this week. Washington's envoy Zalmay Khalilzad says the faction seeks to disrupt the peace deal between Kabul and the Taliban. Khalil Zad said instead of falling into the trap of ISIS and delaying peace, the Afghans must come together to defeat this threat. He said the militant group seeks to trigger a Syria and Iraq-style sectarian war in Afghanistan. Earlier this week, over two dozen people were killed in separate attacks on a medical facility in Kabul and a funeral in Nangahar. Yemen's military says it has killed scores of Houthi members during clashes in southeastern al the governorate. The press office of the Yemeni military said several rebels were also wounded in the fighting. The Houthis have not commented yet. The military statement comes after the UN said 
Yemen's warring parties have made significant progress towards agreeing to a ceasefire. While briefing the Security Council, UN envoy Martin Griffiths said he has given the draft proposal to the government and the Houthi rebels. He said the proposal includes a ceasefire, humanitarian and economic revival, an urgent resumption of the political process. The UN says the warring parties in Yemen have made significant headway towards agreeing to a ceasefire. Speaking at the Security Council, UN envoy Martin Griffith said he has given the draft proposal to the government and the Houthi rebels. He said the proposal includes ceasefire, humanitarian and economic revival and the urgent resumption of the political process. Griffith said the people of Yemen are right to be frustrated about the slow pace of these negotiations. The envoy said the country is also combating the coronavirus, which is spreading at an unknown rate. Earlier, the government reported new cases in the southern province of Altalia, bringing the total to 85 with 12 deaths, while Houthi authorities have reported only two cases and one death, both in Sana'a. Palestinian leaders say they will convene to decide the response to the Israeli government's plan to annex parts of the West Bank. State media said President Mahmoud Abbas will chair a meeting of the leadership of the Palestinian Authority and the Palestine Liberation Organization on Saturday. At a press conference, Prime Minister Mohammed Ishaye said the meeting will take necessary decisions in the face of Israeli declaration. He said Israel's move will destroy the possibility of establishing an independent, contiguous and sovereign Palestinian state. Ishai said the illegal annexation will not be accepted by any Palestinian. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his former rival Benny Gantz signed a deal in April for a unity government. The agreement can accelerate Netanyahu's plans to annex parts of the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Jordan Valley. Israeli troops have shot dead another Palestinian a day after the killing of a teenager during raids in the occupied West Bank. In a statement, the Israeli military said the shooting was triggered by a car ramming attack in the city of Hebron. Tensions in the region flared up ever since Israel announced plans to annex parts of the occupied West Bank. Israeli settlements are deemed illegal as per the international law. The planned inauguration of an Israeli unity government headed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been postponed until Sunday. An official statement said last-minute wrangling over cabinet appointments led to the delay. In a joint statement, rival Benny Gantz agreed to the delay in order to give Netanyahu more time to allocate cabinet posts to the Likud party. Last month, Netanyahu and Gantz signed a deal to form a power-sharing government. Under the agreement, Netanyahu will serve as Prime Minister for at least 18 months before being replaced by Gantz. While Gantz will serve as Defence Minister and Alternate Prime Minister, a title that's never existed before in Israeli politics. China has rejected the United States' plan to extend a UN arms embargo on Iran. In a Twitter post, China's mission to the UN said it also rejects Washington's assertion that it could trigger a return of sanctions on Tehran at the Security Council. The mission said Washington failed to meet its obligations under a 2015 Security Council resolution by quitting the Iran nuclear deal. It said the U.S. has no right to extend an arms embargo on Iran, let alone to trigger snapback. The mission said that maintaining the JCPOA deal is the only right way to move forward. Earlier, U.S. Special Envoy for Iran Brian Hook said Washington will ensure the arms embargo remains one way or another. He said the U.S. has drafted a Security Council resolution and will press ahead with diplomacy and build support. Mozambique says its security forces have killed 50 insurgents in a two-day anti-terror operation. In a statement, Interior Minister Ahmed Makoyded said the operation was carried out in the northern Cabo Delgado region. According to the Amnesty International, since 2017, terrorist attacks have killed 350 people in Cabo Delgado. The violence has affected over 150,000 people during this period. 
U.S. President Donald Trump says he might cut ties with China over its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. In an interview, Trump said the U.S. could save $500 billion if the relationship with Beijing is severed. Trump said he does not want to talk to China's President Xi Jinping right now. He said the pandemic has also cast a shadow over the U.S.-China trade deal and it does not feel the same way now. Trump has accused Beijing of concealing the true scale of the outbreak that first appeared in China's Hubei province in December 2019. The European Medicine Agency says a vaccine for the coronavirus can be ready in a year in an optimistic scenario. Talking to media, the EMA's head of vaccines, Marco Cavalleri, said there could be delays along the way. Meanwhile, Oxford University officials say results from UK's first human trial of a vaccine can be available as soon as next month, while one of the UK government's chief scientific advisors has said fresh air and sunlight are among protective measures against COVID-19. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Jonathan Van Tam said the antibody tests will be available for public in the near future. We have been waiting um, for a really good antibody test um, to be ready. Um, there are now at least two available. Um, one of those um, has um, uh, received its CE mark on the 28th of April, the Roche test. Um, it has been validated by Public Health England on the 7th of May, and I anticipate that it will be rapidly rolled out in the days and weeks to come. The EU says COVID-19 contact tracing apps must only be used during the pandemic and will need to be deactivated once the crisis is over. In a plenary sitting, the Bloc's Justice Commissioner Didier Randers said apps cannot be used for mass surveillance. Dutch lawmaker Sophie Weld called for governments to select providers in a transparent way. She said the contact tracing apps are not the silver bullet that would end the pandemic. Luxembourg's Isabel Vizelier Lima backed the technology, saying that it is a duty for the public authorities to make it available to citizens. Welcome back. Russia claims the domestic coronavirus crisis is easing as the number of new daily cases fell below 10,000 for the first time in nearly two weeks. President Vladimir Putin revealed this during a televised video conference with scientists and officials. Putin said over the past weeks, all efforts have been aimed at fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. But he said the situation is changing, which gives an opportunity to once again focus on current and long-term agenda. Putin's meeting focused on genetic research and plans for Russia to launch three top exploration centers in the field. Health officials said they registered 9,974 new infections in the last 24 hours, bringing Russia's tally to 252,245. This is the second highest in the world after the United States with a total of 2,305 deaths. Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia have opened their borders to each other, creating the first travel bubble within the European Union. The move comes in a bid to jumpstart economies broken down by COVID-19. In a statement, Lithuanian Prime Minister said the travel bubble is an opportunity for businesses to reopen. EU Commission representative in Lithuania said the Baltic states are close partners and their economies are well integrated. Earlier this week, travel restrictions were eased between Finland and Estonia and Poland and Lithuania. Baltic countries were quick to close their borders and impose lockdown measures to slow the spread of the virus. The UN says COVID-19 cases have been detected in one of the Rohingya refugees' camps in southern Bangladesh. Talking to media, a Bangladeshi official and UN spokeswoman said an ethnic Rohingya refugee and another person tested positive for the virus. It is the first confirmed case in the camps which are home to over 1 million refugees. The UN spokesperson said one patient was from the host population, a term used to refer to locals living outside the camps. Bangladesh has reported nearly 19,000 cases and 283 deaths so far. 
The UN says this year a record 24 million Sahelians need life-saving assistance and protection due to violence and natural disasters. In a virtual meeting with aid agencies, UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said nearly 7 million people are grappling with forced displacement. The OCHA said rapid deterioration of Sahel crisis is driving humanitarian needs across the region to unprecedented levels. It said half of those affected are children. UNHCR director said COVID-19 has added to the uncertainty, worsening the displacement and protection crisis. The UN said nearly $3.5 billion are required to assist 17 million residents to tackle the humanitarian situation and pandemic. The COVID-19 crisis continues unabated and people remain isolated in their homes as the global economy crumbles around them. Others are grieving the deaths of those who have lost their lives to the pandemic. The World Health Organization has warned these circumstances are leading to a global mental health crisis. More in this report. It has now been five months since the novel coronavirus was discovered in China. Since then, the virus has made its way across the globe, killing almost 300,000 people and infecting over 4 million. Countries remain locked down, throwing millions of people into poverty and unemployment. The WHO says these conditions are causing an invisible mental health catastrophe. We have seen in the past that similar cases of economic uh, uh, crisis have increased the number of uh, people with mental health issues leading to high rates of suicide, for example, due to the mental health condition or the uh, substance abuse, for example. There is already worrying data on the issue coming out of the US, Iran and China. We have, for example, some surveys that were done um, nationally in a few countries uh, showing an increase of uh, prevalence of distress of 35% uh, of the population surveyed in China, 60% in Iran, 45% in the US. Psychologists warn this problem is also affecting children. The UN says world governments must tackle the emerging crisis on a priority basis. It says this will require increasing investment in psychological services and the provision of emergency mental health assistance. The body adds fake news and rumor mongering on the global pandemic is exacerbating the problem. The World Trade Organization's chief has announced to step down a year earlier than planned amid the COVID-19 fallout. In a virtual WTO meeting, Roberto Azevedo said his early departure as Director General is a personal decision and is in the best interest of the organization. Since the COVID-19 crisis hit, Azevedo has called on governments to refrain from imposing export restrictions on food and medical supplies. My decision was reached after long and hard reflection and much discussion with my family, um, for the reasons that I have outlined, uh, I believe that it would be best if members promptly move ahead with the process for selecting the next Director General. U.S. electric car maker Tesla says it has started producing long-range Model 3 vehicles at its Shanghai factory in China. In a statement, the company said the model will be sold at nearly $49,000. It said the company is making the prices steady even after China stops offering generous subsidies for electric vehicles from July. Earlier, Tesla and Californian officials resolved their clash over safety procedures at the company's sole U.S. assembly plant. The company said it is resuming production at its U.S. plant from next week. European stock markets are trading higher as investors hope for the revival of economic activity after major countries ease lockdown measures. Investors are also monitoring fresh Eurozone economic data due to be released later in the day. Frankfurt Stacks has gained over 1.5% after food technology company GEA Group shares jumped by over 10%. London's FTSE 100 is trading over 1% higher. CAC 40 in Paris has gained nearly 1%. 
In Asia, Nikkei 225 closed over half a percent higher, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index lost a fraction. Shanghai Composite closed marginally lower. Meanwhile, international benchmark Brent crude oil price has gained over 2 percent as U.S. oil stockpiles receded due to output cuts. Now let's look at the weather from around the globe. This is all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at indus.news.